So with the local skies being recently poor and lack of new data to process, I started looking at where to display and host my existing images from last season for family and friends to look at, along with a, hopefully a wider audience too. There's a lot of image hosting and social media services out there, but in today's video, I'm going to talk about, as you can probably guess from this video's title, Astrobin. So just before we get into this video, I want to point out that this video is not sponsored at all by Astrobin, and I'm a fully paid member of the service. Now, if you're a keen or experienced astrophotographer, I'm sure that you will have heard and maybe have used Astrobin before. However, the aim of my YouTube channel is to cater for individuals of all experiences. So I hope that in watching this video, you'll find it useful and insightful. If you do, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. So as I said, while there are, of course, other image hosting services such as Flickr, Google Photos, or even Instagram, from an astrophotography point of view, these are all very generic and don't do much more than allow you to upload and share your images. The difference, as we will shortly see with Astrobin, is that it is not only a website to upload and share your images, but specifically it caters for astrophotographers through providing extra layers of details and information that go along with any of the images that you may upload. Likewise, Astrobin also allows or provides a powerful um, functionality through its search capabilities, along with some exceptional metadata information that can be saved and shared with each image as well. So like any image website or service, you have your own account through which you can upload and publish your images for which other users of the website can view. And again, similar to Flickr, Facebook and Instagram, you can follow other users and see their images. Or as we can see here, uh, you can view the global stream, which is simply an update and stream or display of the limit, latest images that have been uploaded by other Astrobin users. So back to the earlier point about following people um, by clicking on the circle with the plus in the middle icon, um, we can view the images that uh, you follow. So based on the, the different users that I'm currently following, here's the recent um, uploads from them. So this allows you to, you know, if there's a, um, I guess a user or a person who's uploading images that you like or you want to follow, um, or you might have friends or family who also use Astrobin and you want to use them, or you might have a local astro uh, ast astronomy uh, society. Again, you could follow users from that. To view the images of uh, my gallery um, from my user profile, my places, and then select public gallery. Here you can see all of um, information about my own profile and the several images that I've loaded up uh, recently over the past, past several weeks. Um, so that's all great that we can view other users' uh, images and uh, view our own images, but what's the actual difference um, between Astrobin and say something like so Flickr, which is also used for uploading images? So if we browse to my gallery as I've done, and uh, we'll click on one of the images that I've already uploaded, so here I'm going to click on the M42 Orion Nebula. Um, and when viewing an image, not just my own, but anybody else's as well, um, we're presented with the image itself and a lot of extra technical data underneath. So um, let's start from the top. Um, we can see here that it's the M42 Orion Nebula is what I've titled this image, the actual image itself. Um, but if we hover over the image, um, you can see we've got a lot of metadata or information that's came from uh, the plate solving functionality. So when uploading an image into Astro Bin, if you have a paid account um, from light and above, um, then one you actually receive the functionality of plate solving. Now, just in case you've not heard of plate solving or seen it in action, uh, plate solving is where one of our uploaded images is analyzed and all of the stars and objects um, are detected and then compared to a huge celestial database. The results from this database or the results from the an analysis um, then gives us the, the ability or the ability for the software to show us exactly where in the night sky the image was taken. If I scroll down to the right hand side here, 
Um, we can see this through the sky plot. So there is the Orion Nebula just below Orion's belt within the constellation of Orion. And if we scroll back up and hover over again, um, we can then see some markup that's temporarily added to the image or displayed or layered on top of the image. Um, and it confirms all of the astronomical features within. It also gives a uh, good clarification for the results to confirm that we've imaged uh, what you thought you were going to image, and along with identification of other objects that you may have imaged but didn't, didn't realise. Um, so plate solving, um, it's a great little tool, um, and I feel like adds an extra dimension to the images that you upload or view from other people. So moving down the page, uh, we can see the technical card. And this uh, for this particular image, um, it shows the, the, sorry, the first section that it shows um, is, is information that I've manually added while uploading this image. Um, so for other viewers or reminded myself in the future, it shows the telescope, the mount, the imaging camera, the guiding camera, et cetera, et cetera, that was used to take this image. And then underneath um, the scale orientation and radius is calculated or taken from part of the plate solving process. Um, and that gives the, I guess, the coordinates or the reference um, to the image or where the positioning of the image is within the night sky. Um, finally, if we scroll down to the bottom a little bit further, we can see uh, a description which is manually added. Um, so I could probably go back in this and fill this out a little bit further as well. Um, and then at the bottom, we see any community comments or likes um, that have been added um, to this as well. So again, you know, similar to um, other um, image uploading services, allows you to view and comment on other people's images as well. Um, the last thing I want to show you on this page is if I scroll up again and click on the image itself, um, it loads up a larger image. But one of the nice touches here is if we click onto the image, we can then um, click and hold and kind of zooms around the image to see the specific details of what we've taken. Um, release again, and we'll go back to the larger view. Mouse over and mouse on. Again, we see the, um, the plate solving information. OK, so I'm just going to return back to um, the original card image here. And next, we'll talk about searching other images within Astrobin. Astrobin is currently hosting around half a million images which reflects the usage and following that the service has had over the years. Now, it's great that you can follow people and view a global stream, but where I found the power of Astrobin is the search functionality. So if I have imaged a DSO, one of the things I want to compare my image to is other people's images of the same object with the same equipment. So, you know, I can see um, how there's a difference in processing or how objects have been framed or how many images have been stacked. Um, but it's interesting just to compare um, the, the same object, I suppose, from, from how other people have done that. Um, so as an example to show how we're going to do this, um, I'm going to search for the subject M45. And that narrows down, I guess, the half a million images. And we'll just scroll to the bottom to over 226 pages of um, the Orion Nebula, um, which is obviously thousands of impressive images. But if I want to specifically um, narrow the images down to my equipment, I'm going to add the 80 ED telescope and just search that. And that narrows us down to eight pages. So getting a little bit closer. So we can kind of see different cameras, different mounts, different exposures, et cetera, et cetera. Um, quite a lot of those images are, are, are looking very, very similar. Um, but let's go one step further and add the type that it's a DSLR camera as opposed to a specific um, astrophotography camera. And now we've only got what two, four, six, seven images um, of the M45 using the same ADED telescope with a DSLR type camera. And again, we can click on the image 
and we get the exact same information or data record card um, as I've just shown you before um, with the information that was a Nikon DSLR camera, 80ED Skywatcher telescope, same as what I've got, um, slightly different guidance, scope, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But it just allows you to compare and, you know, I'd like to think that was similar to what I'm getting with that same equipment as well. Um, if we could just go back a page, back to the search. Um, one of the cool things you can do is if you're thinking about upgrading your equipment, um, you could see what it may look like if it was imaged with that upgraded equipment. So at the minute, I'm thinking about uh, upgrading my camera from a, a, a Canon DSLR to a dedicated Astro camera, um, maybe an ASI 240, so I'm just going to, uh, or 294, sorry. So I'm just going to type in 294 into there, into the camera type, and we can see straight away, not a huge number, um, but, a, but a, you know, a good handful of images of the M45 with the same telescope with the 294 camera. So I'm kind of see that, yes, it might worth, be worth uh, an upgrade um, if the types of images that, especially on the Orion's Nebula, um, would, would be such as this. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's quite a big uh, difference from where I am with my DSLR maybe proving the fact that as dedicated astro cameras are a lot better than DSLRs as expected. The nice little feature on here is obviously there's a lot of images being uploaded. Hopefully you're uploading them yourselves, but if you're looking for aspirations of what's possible, um, there's a section at the top here where you can explore top picks or images of the day. Um, so these top pictures are very, very impressive, um, voted for by the community um mix of deep sky objects uh planets etc etc uh saturn and jupiter which is obviously um, well positioned at the sky in the minute and then if we look at the uh image of the day so this is where the real eye candy is um you can see obviously day by day uh there's a top image and this is just kind of a, a stream of those images so a fantastic image there of jupiter in the middle um, and as I said, it gives you a lot of inspiration and just shows you what is actually um, achievable in the hobby of astrophotography. Uh, I feel I'm a long way off myself, but um, it's good to see um, and be inspired by what other people are doing. So hopefully for those who have not tried or discovered uh, Astrobin before, this gives a quick tour of the main features. Um, and areas I didn't specifically touch on is uploading your image, um, which is just a straightforward um, wizard or several steps of dragging your image or file in here. The upload then takes place and you then complete the metadata around the image uh, before publishing it for everybody else to see. Um, the website also has, or Astrobin also has a forum um which you know is obviously um yes specific to astronomy but even more specific to astrophotography um and it's got a great community feeling around it so you know please take a look please try it i know there's 101 different forums out there but if you're looking for something specific for astrophotography this is probably a good forum to to try so we'll just end there with um the image of the day for the current day while recording this. Um, well done to Patrick. Um, fantastic image there. Um, but just to round things off, um, please let me know your thoughts on Astrobin. Um, have you used it? Have you got any other alternatives that you, you feel um, is maybe better or just as good as Astrobin? Let me know in the comments below. And finally, if you've enjoyed or found this or my other videos useful, then please subscribe. Uh, to the channel and or like or comment against my various videos. Um, so many thanks for your time watching this.